Switch caliber rifles, 260 or 65 Creedmoor, and barrel length. This week on Mail Call Mondays. Mail Call Mondays is sponsored by Modular Driven Technologies. If you need a chassis system for your precision rifle, check out mdttac.com. I'm John McQuay with 8541 Tactical, and this is Mail Call Mondays, the show that answers your questions about precision rifles, optics, and equipment. Welcome to another Mail Call Mondays, and our first question this Monday comes from Josh, and Josh asks, have you ever had the chance to shoot a Desert Tech SRS? If so, what are your thoughts? Is there, in your opinion, a better switch caliber chassis already on the market? If not, do you ever plan on doing a review on one? Uh, well, Josh, uh, first of all, yes, I actually have shot a Desert Tech SRS before. And uh, yes, I actually do plan on reviewing the Desert Tech SRS A1, which happens to be the rifle that is sitting here in front of me right now. Uh, now, your question of, on if there is a better switch barrel uh, rifle on the market, um, it's not a matter of better, it's not a matter of best. Uh, the switch barrels on the market each have kind of their own uh, set of drawbacks and their own set of benefits. Uh, one of the major benefits in something like the Desert Tech SRS is your overall length is considerably shorter since it utilizes a bullpup design. So even when you compare this to say an AT or an AX multi-caliber from Accuracy International, uh, if you compare similar barrel lengths, this has a 20 inch 308 barrel in it, the Accuracy International is going to be considerably longer. Uh, that is when it is in its firing configuration. Now the Accuracy International AT that we have in here, uh, it has a side folding stock on it, so in its stowed configuration uh, is about the same size as the SRS when it's all folded up. Uh, but you obviously cannot fire it that way. So if you are constantly working in close quarters, if you're in cramped situations, uh, if you're, say, a law enforcement officer and you need to shoot out of the back of a car, or you need to have a low-profile system to get in and out of uh, confined spaces, uh, then something like the SRS is a great option. Now, specifically talking about the switch barrel configuration, now, the SRS utilizes a barrel extension on the barrel, and what determines the headspace on the system is the bolt locking up in that barrel extension. Uh, so when you put the barrel in and you're sliding that guy back in here, uh, you run the bolt forward and lock the bolt down, and you make sure those surfaces made up before you torque the barrel down, uh, and that determines that you're returning to the headspace every time. On something like the AX multi-caliber or the AT, uh, you have a single pinch bolt, which is more convenient, and you just uh, screw the barrel in by hand, but you're betting on that uh, lockup of the barrel uh, smoothly mating on the barrel shoulder against the face of the receiver before you tighten that pinch bolt down. So the Accuracy International system for me is a little bit more convenient to switch barrels and to get it locked in, uh, but the SRS system I think has a little bit more of a benefit uh, with that bolt locking down into that barrel. I think you get a little bit more indicator uh, that the barrel may not be seated completely uh, with the Desert Tech system. Now we haven't got a lot of work switching the barrels out on the Desert Tech system. I have got a lot of uh, work switching the barrels out on the Accuracy International system and that really hasn't been a problem on the AI. The AI screwing the barrel in and getting it locked in is really no big deal at all. And on the AIs you have one cross bolt that you worry about torquing and that's really about it. And really in the, the cross bolt torquing is what is just holding that barrel in place. It's not what is setting the headspace on the barrel. So if you exceeded or got the torque under a little bit, I don't think it's really gonna cause a problem for you. Uh, the rifle will still be able to fire. Uh, you would just, if you were greatly under the torque, uh, there would be the risk of that barrel uh, backing out. On the uh, SRS, when you run the bolt forward and lock it down, uh, the bolt is camming inside of that barrel extension and that is what is locking the chamber closed and that is what is setting your headspace. 
the cam bolt in here and the pinch bolts, uh, those are just what is holding that barrel extension into the receiver, keeping it aligned every time you run that uh, bolt up and lock it down. Now on the overall system, uh, you do have one significant drawback from the SRS, and that is for left-handed shooters, or if you're a right-handed shooter and you're forced to shoot this guy from support side, it's gonna look, be a little bit slower running that bolt because you will actually have to move your face in order to get that bolt to its uh, rearward travel. It's gonna be dependent upon what you intend to do with the rifle. Uh, that is a slight drawback in a competition environment because you are on the clock. Uh, so having to move your face to get that second shot bolted up uh, can be a little bit of a drawback. In a real world environment, I don't think it's gonna be that big of a deal for a right-handed shooter uh, who has to shoot from support side. Uh, your face is gonna be over this open track. It's not gonna be as comfortable as uh, shooting for instance, the Accuracy International uh, from that side. But, you know, it'll still work. You can still get the job done. And that's the big thing is getting the job done. You just don't want to get your mouth too close uh, to that bolt handle if you're shooting support side. So just keep those little things in mind. Um, overall, from the previous times that I've shot the Desert Tech SRS, it's been a really great system. It's comfortable to shoot overall. It has one of the best bullpup triggers that I have ever fired. Uh, it does have a two-stage trigger in here that is adjustable, and it seems to work just fine. Uh, so overall, the Desert Tech SRS is a great little system, and it will definitely draw attention at the range. You'll have people that will uh, check it out because they have never seen a bullpup like this before. And again, your overall length thing, if you decide to run a suppressor on this, uh, you can run a suppressed 20-inch rifle, or even if you want to go to their covert model, which has a shorter forend and uh, in a... a uh, even shorter 16-inch barrel configuration, you can get this thing really compact. So for a law enforcement officer that wants a super compact system that you can still run a suppressor on, uh, the SRS offers some distinct advantages. So we will do a full review on the Desert Tech SRS, and we'll let you guys know what we think overall and specifically how well the switch barrel setup works. Uh, Desert Tech was nice enough to send us a couple boxes of their ammunition, uh, so we'll also tell you how well uh, their branded ammunition works in this guy. Uh, so that is my overall opinion of the SRS system at this point. Uh, once we get our full review done, I'll come back and let you know what I think then. And our next question comes from Vincent. And Vincent asks, would you choose 6.5 Creedmoor or 260 Remington for precision slash tactical shooting? Whichever caliber, what is the minimum barrel length you would choose? 20 inch seems to compromise velocity quite a bit. Um, well, Vincent... The toss-up between 6.5 Creedmoor and 260 really in the tactical shooting environment I don't think is enough to worry about. I tend to sway towards 6.5 Creedmoor because that is the more widely supported cartridge in the precision shooting arena. Uh, you find more ammunition manufacturers making 6.5 Creedmoor right now. Uh, you find more rifles that are in fast twist barrels being chambered in 6.5 Creedmoor. So I tend to lean towards the 6.5 Creedmoor. Now obviously I do have a bolt action Remington 700 chambered in 260. Uh, we've got gas guns, we've tested guns that are in 6.5 Creedmoor, the barrel for the SRS that we have in is in 6.5 Creedmoor. Uh, so I tend to lean a little bit more towards the 6.5 Creedmoor. Uh, the ballistics are very, very similar between the two. Uh, barrel life may lean a little bit more towards the 6.5 Creedmoor. And the overall cartridge length, the 6.5 Creedmoor, has a little bit more breathing room in some magazines because of a slightly shorter cartridge overall length. So those are all kind of benefits on the uh, 6.5 Creedmoor side. It has a sharper shoulder and it has a cartridge geometry that is really more uh, optimized for a semi-automatic rifle. And then it doesn't really draw, have any drawbacks when used in a bolt action rifle. So that's really the, the pros and cons on that. Now with companies like Remington starting to support the uh, 260 a little bit more, we may see 
a little bit of a shift and we may see the 260 catch up with the 65 Creedmoor a little bit more. So we're still going to have this back and forth thing, I think, between the two. But you're not really going to be wrong on whichever one you choose. I would choose the rifle first. And once you choose the rifle, uh, then look at your caliber options on it if you can go 260 or if you can go 65 Creedmoor. Uh, if you're going to go bolt action and semi-auto, then I think I would lean towards the 6.5 Creedmoor. Now, whichever one you go to, if you're staying in a 6.5 millimeter bullet, I would stay around the 24 inch barrel length, especially if you're trying to compete with it. Uh, that longer barrel length is gonna help you maximize velocity out of that cartridge and more velocity is gonna give you less drift and less drop. So the big thing you're looking for is less wind drift, higher velocity will give you less wind drift. Uh, so that is really the benefit of going with a longer barrel. Now, obviously, you have to balance that with getting into and out of barricades, getting into and out of vehicles, confined spaces, and just transporting the rifle to and from the range. Very often, uh, when I fly somewhere, I have to get a rental car. Uh, you don't want to have to pay the upcharge to get the big SUV. Uh, so if they stick you with some little matchbox, you still want to be able to get your rifle in the trunk. Uh, so you don't want to go with a big 30-inch barrel. And a huge 30-inch barrel would then uh, put a whole lot of extra weight out in front of the rifle. And it can cause you some balance issues when you're shooting from a tripod, shooting from a barricade. I think a 24-inch barrel is a really good compromise between velocity and between handling. And if you stick with something like a Sendero or a little bit heavier, um, a heavy varmint barrel, then you're not really sacrificing a ton of weight out front. You get a good balance to the rifle as well. Now, if you are a law enforcement shooter or you have a special purpose in mind, then you may be able to go with that shorter barrel. If you're in a law enforcement situation, uh, then the envelope that you're going to be engaging targets in is going to be significantly compressed versus a precision rifle competition shooter. So with that compressed envelope, you're not quite as worried about the wind drift. You're not quite as worried about the drop. Uh, you are more worried about your terminal energy on the target. And even if you went down to something like a 16 inch barrel, you are still going to have plenty of terminal energy inside that 300 to 600 yard range to get the job done. So for competition shooters, stay with a 24 inch. For a law enforcement shooter, then if you need to drop back to that 20 inch range, even 18 inches, you're still gonna be fine if you're running a 6.5 or even a 308. Uh, so that's pretty much the basic considerations I have on that. I will stick to that 24 inch barrel because I've found that I have very few limitations uh, in shooting competition with a 24 inch barrel. It seems to be a, a really good compromise, especially in a bolt gun uh, where you have that breech face move back closer to you versus an AR where the breech face seems to be a little bit further away from you. Um, so I hope that gives you a little bit of insight on that. And that is our last question for this Mail Call Mondays. And uh, hopefully we will be able to get you guys a little bit more content rolling out. Uh, thank you for bearing with me on this time when I have been out of the country. So you've only pretty much had stuff that I've had pre-planned and uh, pre-canned and ready to go automatically. Uh, we have got a bunch of stuff like the Desert Tech SRS uh, that we need to get our review done and get it out to you guys so you can check out. So uh, stick with us. We will have our content rolling out a little bit quicker uh, going forward once we get caught up from all our stuff from our trip. For those of you guys that are supporting us on Patreon, uh, thank you very much. I have been very, very gratified at the outpouring of support that we've got. Please, guys, keep it up. Uh, the goal is for us to be totally independent and not reliant upon YouTube AdSense anymore. Uh, so I really love the support that you guys have given us so far. Thank you very much. If you have a question or comment that you'd like to have included on Mail Call Mondays, if you're listening to us on podcast, you can send it to us at 8541tactical at gmail.com. If you're watching us on YouTube, you can leave it in the comments section below, or anybody can send it to us on Facebook or Twitter. And until next time, get out and shoot!